Okay, so here's the final drive. When I was looking at the bearing bushing that goes in here, I saw that some of the chrome had started to come off, little pieces. It wasn't horrible, but I didn't like it. Um, and in fact, if I'm in here and I'm rebuilding it, and you can kind of feel it, if I'm in here and I'm rebuilding that, I'm not putting that back in. So I got a brand new one. So here's a brand new uh, bushing. Looks perfect, feels perfect, everything's great. Gonna put that in there. Made a special bush bushing pusher to push that in there. And so I'm gonna go on the press. I'm gonna heat this up and I'm gonna press that in. So I'm gonna go and do that right now. Okay, so got this pressed in, it's still hot, not gonna touch it. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put 28 of these into the pinion shaft and um, I buy 30 because I always buy a couple extras because one or two always wind up rolling away on me. Um, then I'll put this in. Obviously I, I have a pinion bearing that is perfect, just enough to slide on and slide into the end like such. Okay, and then I put this in and put my nut on. So that way it holds it all together. Uh, so I'll show that to you later, but right now I'm going to put 28 of these bearings, needles, into the, into the pinion shaft. So I put 28 rollers in there. You probably can't see that, but 28 in there. Be able to put this in here. Now there's the inside race. This had a shim on it when I got it, so I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to put this in. I am going to put the spacer on. Going to put the, this is an R51 too, so it left hand thread. Okay, I'm just going to hand tighten it. That way I have to do very much more. Sounds good. Okay, hand tighten that. Okay, all right, then I'm going to take a couple of spacers I made up here, put them up here, and then I'm going to take the actual um, bolt that goes in the end there, the tapered bolt, and I'm going to put the tapered bolt in. And it will tighten the whole entire pack down. Okay. There you go. That's the right way around. Okay, you gotta find the right way around, and that is locked in there. That is going nowhere. Next, I'm gonna take 44 of these needles and put them on the outside of here. I'll get that done, and then I'll show that to you. Okay, normally you check the um, backlash first on the gear and then the contact pattern, but because I measured this at 40, um, at, at um, a 30,000 shim, which was thicker than what I had, I figured I'll check the contact pattern first before I do the backlash. So what we do is take some Prussian blue, and usually you use a, um, A paintbrush, but I'm just gonna put it on here with this. I can get it in there pretty good with this. Okay, it's wide enough to get a nice spread on it. Okay, get enough in there. And I do a bunch of different um, teeth. Alright. And you want to coat them like that. And I'm not sure if you can see it. But I'm coating it pretty good. And this Prussian blue is really good stuff. Okay, let's get that one. I think that's enough. Okay. Just like that. Good. 
throw that out. Put this back in. Make sure the needles are all in place. Okay. Now turn in the rotation that you're, and I'm just going to put this in, I'm going to hold a little bit of pressure down on it. Okay, and you hold the pressure back on this one. Okay. Like that. Okay, take her out, take that out. Take this out, and then we look at it, and it's actually pretty good. Okay, it's a little bit out at the heel, but not bad. It's got a pretty good contact pattern, like right in the middle. Yep, it's a pretty good contact pattern right in the middle. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's a pretty good contact pattern right in the middle. So, I think I'm going to leave that alone. I'll clean, clean this gear up and then we'll check the backlash. So your setup to measure the backlash doesn't have to be too fancy. Okay, this is not very fancy. I got an angle iron with my, um, with my uh, magnetic mount. It's not a fancy thing. I made this with a bolt. Not fancy. Okay, but it works. So, coming down here, I'm looking at my gauge. I have 16 thousandths. That is way too much. You want six to nine. So I'm 10 over. 10 to seven, seven to 10 over. Okay, you can even see, that's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna have to, so the shim, the brass shim needs to get thinner. So I'll work on that and I'll come back. But the brass shim's gotta get thinner with that. And I measured it this in several places. I put this cause it's a shop made tool. I just bolt it in these areas right here and I measured it and it's right around 50 you know between 14 and 16 so it's got a it's got a that shim's got to get thinner I've gotten the spacer down to a point where you can just see that right there come down here it's nine thousandths which is just right on the edge but I'm okay with nine thousandths. I'm gonna put some Prussian blue. I'm gonna take this all apart. I'm gonna put some Prussian blue on it and I'm gonna see where the wear pattern is. Um, and if the wear pattern is still good, we're good. If not, I'll have to readjust the spacer in here and then maybe even the spacer down there again based on the backlash. So I'll put the Prussian, take this all apart, put the Prussian blue on and then I'll come back and show you that. Okay, so I got a good amount of Prussian blue on this. Painted it nice, nicely up. I'm gonna put it right about there, so we're just gonna start. Okay, there you go. I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on here. Some books say put pressure on, some books say put the cover on, put a little bit of pressure on, but I'm gonna put hand pressure here for now. There we go. I'm going to put pressure down like this as I'm going to roll. And because I have the bearing, I'm actually on the inside of the bearing. Alright, I think that's good enough. Take this out. Let's take a look. Shall we? That is actually pretty good. There you go. If you can see it, there's a little bit of blue in the front, a little bit of blue in the or in the front, on the back, and there's a beautiful pattern right in the middle. That's actually really nice. I am okay with that. I'm not changing anything. In fact, the pattern got better since I adjusted the backlash. So I am going to clean everything up, get everything ready to start putting in. And then we'll be ready to do the actual, um, the bearing shim on the top. We're all together, put a fresh bearing in, put this in, that's all ready. Everything's good, everything's ready. Now is the right time without the seal in here to get the, um, 
the shims right. So this goes in this, you know, um, the depth shims. So that way this doesn't stick out too far or in, or in too deep. Um, also, once I have it all set, I mark everything with red because I know it's so much easier to put it together. So I just, once everything's set, put the right shims in, everything's good, done my testing. Um, I just mark everything with red. And then when I'm ready to put it in the motorcycle, it just goes straight in. So pretty much I'm gonna take this out, put a new seal in here, and then put this in. Um, I'm waiting for the right uh, spacers here. Uh, because this is an R51 slash 2, they're different, so I'm waiting for the right one, so I'm not going to fully tighten it, but um, it'll be tight enough to do everything else here to make sure that we have the right um, setting, so we can do all the setting. So there you go, so she's pretty good. So right now, I'm going to get rolling with, um, with the shims I need here, and because I've had to put a smaller shim, and a smaller spacer shim in to get the backlash right, probably gonna have to put a larger shim up top. So the one that came out of it probably isn't good, but I have others. So I'm gonna put all my tools away, all the special tools, this and everything else, I'm putting the drive shaft away. Before you press the drive shaft off the end, please do me a favor and write down the, <laughs> the length of from one end to the, to, to the flange because that's where you have to press it back on. So once I press it back on, it'll be pressed to the length there and everything will be good. So that's that. So I am now setting the ring gear side float. So what I did was I measured every area by laying these flat on here. I just held them nice and easy and then I put my plunge gauge down. Now I set it to zero. Um, you know, before, you know, sorry, I set to zero, fully unplunged, and then I went like this, and I measured it, and I was able to tell how what the distance was, and then you have to sub subtract for the parallel. Don't forget that, the thickness of the parallel. So I did that in every single area, 294, 295, 296, 298, 292, 296, came up with an average of 295. So that's, that is how 295 thousandths from the gasket to the top of the bearing here. So I wrote that down. Then I went and I measured the same thing on the cover itself. So I come over. So then I measured the distance of the down to where the bearing sits. And I have a parallel here so it's, so it doesn't sit here. I want it want to measure off the gasket surface. So I'm measuring off the gasket surface this parallel on top of this parallel, and it clears that. And then I measure down, and it was actually extremely consistent. Okay, it was actually 510, 509, 510, 510, 510. So I came up minus the, the two parallels. So it's an 18, 18 thousandths thickness of a shim. Found these two new shims I just bought. That's 16 thousandths because we want them to subtract two thousandths for the um, uh, gasket. And there it is. And I already test fitted it with the cover. Put the cover on with this test um, bearing. And it felt really, really good. A smidge on the tight side, which is fine because there's no oil in here now. Um, it, was, it was still easily to, able to turn, smidge tight, but I'm also going to put silicone on the gasket. So that's going to give it another half a thousandths. So it's going to be perfect. So now I'm going to put the new, the proper bearing in, the correct, the, the, um, the new bearing in, put that in there. And then I'm going to put this down there and then I'll close it all up. So this is all ready. We have the backlash set. We have the wear pattern proper, which is the pinion depth set. Everything looks good. Leaving this um, just fairly tight, but not fully tight because I'm, I'm waiting for the right spacer. Remember, this is an R51 slash 2, so I'm waiting for the right spacer on that one. Um, we have the spacer down here with a new felt installed. So we are all ready to now press 
the cover on. Now we have to press the cover on because it's an interference fit here. You do not want to heat the cover because that's going to expand it and make it harder. So um, there's a press fit here. So we're going to do that right now. And then we'll, um, I'll, I'll put the nuts on and the washers on. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how we put the, um, the seal on the other side. Because that's an interesting thing to do. There are several ways to do this. Uh, some people have special tools they have. I just take a little bit of um, masking tape that's strong enough and I can just slip this right down. Make sure that this is lined up with the oil hole or else you'll have other issues. So I'm going to put some grease on here on the edge here and just slide this down. It'll slide down nicely with a little bit of grease right there. And so I'm going to put some grease on the edge. I'll put a little bit of grease on the masking tape. I'll make it slip down there nice. And then just slip it down. Just kind of work it a little bit and walk it. And, it, and it'll go. It'll go in due time. You don't want to stretch it too much. Just got to be easy with it. And there you go. There she goes. And kind of make sure that the masking tape doesn't go down with it. But right there. And then I can pull out the masking tape. So that's it. So that's down there. Make sure it's lined up. With the hole proper. Like that. Push it down all the way. There we go. There we go. So that's seated. And that's fine. Just line it all up. And then the masking tape just comes straight out, like that. And make sure you got it all. Okay, here we see we got all the masking tape. We didn't lose any, right? Nope, didn't lose any. No masking tape lost. And there you go. So, we'll put the cover on next. And then make sure that everything's fine. Okay, so now this is on. We line this up, you got to make sure that the drain hole is there, and then we just start putting these in. Line this up like that, so putting these six in. And they typically go in without any washers. I like to put little washers on them, so I'm just going to start them all like this, and I'm going to put little tooth washers on them, just because I like to. Doesn't mean you have to. I just like it because I think it's a little safer. And I don't do not want these backing out at all. Because these will get into your wheel and the and the brakes and it's not a good thing. So I like to put some tooth washers on here. So I'll put some tooth washers on here, tighten these up, and then we'll be back to see what's next.